we're really thin at that position right now. We don't have bodies. Um, that being said, I, I've seen improvement from Garrett, improvement from Caleb, uh, Jamari, uh, and Blaze. Um, those guys have really taken a giant leap forward, in my opinion. Um, we had trouble blocking them today, and hopefully that's a sign that uh, they're playing good football uh, as opposed to we didn't protect well enough. You know, that, that outside linebacker slash DN spot, Dave, I mean, I think that can be an area of strength for us. I mean, he just said, Frost just said we don't have a lot of depth there, but between Blaze and Tanner and Garrett and, and Butler, who Jamari Butler, I think is he's primed to take off and have a, have a good season this year. And if we can get Mathis in that mix too, I mean, there's some, there's some players in there. And I think that, those are guys that can give some trouble to more than just the the offensive tackles that we had out there. I know that I, I know there could be some movement on the tackle position for us offensively, but those guys can be some good. We can get some good pass rush from those guys. Yeah, it seems like Garrett uh, Nelson definitely making a, a jump forward, and yeah, I mean, I, I, it seems like you know the depth thing. I get it, but they were making making um, uh, an impact on the on the game, especially in the first half, which is hard to figure out because if you're not playing tackle at all. I mean, like, I don't know exactly what the offensive linemen were allowed to do, but it felt like if you could just simply keep in between, um, you know, your defender and the quarterback, you'd, you'd be able to do a pretty good job, but that, that was not happening apparently. No. Um, I think that if we're going to hit the portal in area, I can definitely see D tackle being a spot where just yeah. depth wise, you know, Casey Rogers has had some health concerns there and, and, Hopefully he's healthy and full go by the season. But between him and Nash, um, Ty Robinson, I mean, there's some there's some players that have a little bit of experience there. But uh, you know, we'd be counting so much on young guys. Um, and I, there's a lot of potential with Weaver, and there's a lot of potential with with Black, and um, you know, Newsom. He just hasn't really taken hold. He's been here for about three or four years now, and so I mean, at some point, you know, you're going to get recruited over and. I think that they're probably going to be looking at that spot here in the next couple of weeks uh, to to build some depth there through the portals. Is my guess is is defensive tackle. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I, um, you mentioned Newsom. That's um, Mosiah Newsom, is that right? But yes, it's, it's I, I made me think of Quinton Newsom, our the cornerback, mm -hmm. who uh, has kind of got one of those positions locked down. It looks like uh, Braxton Clark actually started opposite of him, which I think has gotten some people interest peaked, um, which is great. He's been here for like five years and he, he's had, had quite a bit of playing time, but a lot of people thought that maybe uh, the ASU transfer Tommy, yeah, Tommy Hill, Hill might take that over, but it looks like Braxton is uh, fighting for that position. I think at least he's fighting for it. I, I don't know again with spring game, how much you take out of it. And because there isn't a, a red and white, there wasn't a starting a starting corner on one team and a starting corner on the other team. Right, this is just sure. everyone's defense. But um, I, I I know Hill is going to be a, a major player next year, whether he's starter or not. Um, but it's great to see if, if Clark would be. I love Clark's size, his length, six foot three guy. Uh, I'd love to see him, uh, you know, be healthy and, and be able to go out there. Um, I thought, I think the linebacking crew, there's a lot of potential there. I know they want to probably get one more inside linebacker and maybe do that through the portal. But I, I've really liked uh, Va, M Malga Clements. I, I yeah, a lot of people talking about his performance. Yeah, they, I, they said his name a lot on Saturday. Yeah. It's they, hard to say, too, so it means we really always well, showing Yeah, up. and they I mean, they really were. It felt like that was something I was going to bring up. It felt like that they said his name a lot on, on Saturday, a lot. Probably 10, 15 times I heard it. Mm -hmm. I mean, between that and Houseman, Ernest Houseman, the true freshman from, yeah, from uh, your alma mater there, Dave, uh, Columbus High. I think those two guys are, are well, Houseman's young and, and, you know, Va now has been here for, they came here as a Juco and he's been here at least one season. So, I mean, he's, it's time for him to to get out there and make some plays. Um, but between those two and you have Heinrich in and then with Reimers and uh, Kola Revich is kind of off playing the, the nickel spot. But, uh, you know, there's some, there's some growing some depth there. And, uh, I, and it's led with two guys that are, are really experienced. I mean, so Heinrich and, and Reimers, obviously there was spring injuries where they weren't both playing out there and everything. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, with that group. If they want to get one more guy in there in the, the, the portal, I guess that wouldn't shock me. But short of that, I mean, I, I think that that's a, a solid group there. 
Awesome. Well, uh, you know, recruiting wise, again, um, out of the 100 recruits we had, if there was one that you wanted the most honky, who would that be? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of, we need to win now, you know, I've made a point of that. And so as much as I would love us getting all the great players from 2023 class, Mathis is an immediate contributor, somebody that would be in Lincoln here, you know, already by the summer and, and playing and, you know, it's interesting to me with Mathis, he comes into that position that we talked about with Tanner and Garrett Nelson already. I mean, those are two, you know, does he just come in and yeah. immediately start? Yes. Probably. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he he's the to. top transfer guy, but like who, who do you just pull out of that? Um, I'm just saying he's coming into a, a good position, but he can make a good position really, really, really good. And of course they're not going after him the way they are for him not to sit, you know, for him to sit on the bench and not play. So yeah, um, right. yeah, of course he'd be out there, but it's gonna it's gonna add a lot of lot of depth and some star power there. That would be my number one guy. And you think about it too, between bringing him in from the transfer portal and then guys like Tommy Hill that have been brought in too. I mean, there there could be multiple starters on that Blackshirt defense next year that uh you know were just transfers in and playing somewhere else a year ago. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it se- it seemed like he was everybody's number one recruit too, Honky. It, 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 quite honestly, I mean, what did what did Greg say last night? That I mean, Scott was like there meeting with him, and it didn't seem like there was a single moment that he was in the stadium or on campus where somebody from the team that of some importance wasn't there talking to him or walking around with him and his family or taking them somewhere or doing something with them and. You know, the the whole NIL thing where they sent mm-hmm. people down to speak with him before um, he even came up here from Texas, um, just kind of laying out what that deal would look like. Um, and then at halftime announcing that they were going to be paying the scholarship students or what was it? Um, uh, what, 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 what was the word I was looking for? But well, basically paying them for, for academic achievement, you know, that the, the $5,980 a, yep. a year or whatever it was. So um you know all of that really tied in well and a lot of that had to do with him it seemed like right like where he was kind of he was kind of the one guy that led the whole pack the entire weekend for sure yeah well i mean sounds like i mean his decision should be coming in the next few weeks at at most it sounds like he could be on campus as early as may 1st i've heard um wherever he decides and um we don't know all the suitors. Definitely sounds like Texas, uh, USC, and maybe a few others are still high on his his list with us. Um, and then, you know, I mean, if all things are equal, I mean, hopefully, you know, he was pre- impressed with the spring game atmosphere and all the attention, but also um, how maybe that NIL will play into that is going to be really interesting to see.